in order that we might prepare our hearts for the meeting to follow, shall we turn to Revelation chapter 5 and begin reading in verse 11. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 11. While you're turning, I'd just like to say what a joy it is to be back and to sense the joy in the Lord and the refreshing spirit here at this dose once again. Uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 11, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, but all that are in them, heard I say, blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, forever and ever. The four beasts said, Amen. The four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him for little, forever and ever. Let's turn back to verse 12, and let's all read it together, shall we? Because that's the verse I'd like to think with you about tonight. Verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Worthy is the Lamb, and He really is, dear friend. Worthy of homage and of praise. Worthy by all to be adored. Exhaustless theme of heavenly faith, thou, thou art good, Jesus, Lord. In the rush of present day life, it's often easy to forget how infinitely worthy the Lord Jesus is of all of our worship and our praise and the adoration of our heart. Worthy the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Just think of it. We sit here tonight under this roof. People for whom someone has died. And that someone was not a mere man, but the Lord of life and glory. Just think of the Christ that he paid for our redemption. That we might be with him eternally in Emmanuel's land, came to the cross of shame and poured out his life for us. Worthy is the land that was slain. It says, Worthy is the land that was slain to receive. And I think that some versions of the Bible have the word authority here. I must confess to you tonight that, that this, this verse of Scripture often puzzles me. I would read it, Worthy is the land that was slain to receive power. And I think, how could he possibly have more power than he already had? Didn't Jesus say all power is given unto thee in heaven and earth? Isn't he the omnipotent one? Somebody then gave me uh, a text, a wall text, and I hung it in the bedroom right opposite my bed. And I used to lie in my bed at night and say, Worthy is the land that was slain to receive power. The one I just thought flashed across my mind, he does, he already has all power. But this means my submission to his authority. It's not his power. It's 
my bowing the knee to his authority. He already has all authority, but he wants me to acknowledge. And what that really says is that the Lord Jesus Christ is worthy that I should bow the knee to all the And I really think that's the beginning of all true worship. The Apostle Paul said, For to this end Christ both died and rose again that he might be what? Lord. He also said, writing to the Corinthians, he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him that died. Dear friends, the Lord Jesus is worthy. You and I should bow before him and acknowledge him. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Hilkington of Uganda once said, if he is king, he has a right to all. But this is what the hosts of heaven are singing tonight. This is the song that we'll sing throughout all the earth. Worthy is the land C.T. Studd once said, I had known about Jesus dying for me, but I had never understood that he died for me, then I didn't belong to myself. And that if I took my life and lived it the way I wanted to, then I was a thief. When I realized that, it didn't seem hard to give all to him. And he also said, if Jesus Christ be gone, and die for him, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make them do. That's what this means. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive authority, my subjection to his authority. Jim Elliot said, He is no fool who is what he cannot be. He was just saying the thing. This is an echo that goes down through the centuries from the from the lips of men who follow the logic of Christianity and led them down a one way street in total commitment to him. Gordon of Yale said, Lord Jesus, I take hands off as far as my life is concerned. I put thee on the throne in my heart. Change, cleanse, use me as thou shalt choose. I take the full power of thy Holy Spirit, my thank thee. Amen. And another said, a young girl at Moody Bible Institute wants to write to the front of her Bible, Lord Jesus, I give up my own purposes and plans, all my own desires, hopes and ambitions, whether they be fleshly or soulish. I give myself, my life, my all, utterly to thee. To be thine forever. I hand over to thy keeping all of my friendship, my love. All the people whom I love are to take second place in my heart. Fill me and seal me with thy holy spirit. Work out thy whole will in my life at any cost, now and forever. For to be the living Christ. Sign her name to a steady son. Later she married John Stan. They went out to China and sealed their testimony with their father. What was he saying? He was saying, worthy. It's a lamb that was slain to receive a You know, if every knee in the universe bowed to Jesus Christ, this would be none too much. But we have the wonderful privilege tonight to come together and to worship Him and pour out our hearts of devotion to Him and say, Worthy is the lamb that was slain, and He will have my submission to His authority. Then the verse goes on to say, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive riches. Once again, you think, Riches? He owns the cattle and the thousand years. Creator and sustainer of the universe. How can he receive riches? I think it means my riches, don't you? I think it means your riches. I don't have any riches, do The Lord allows certain amounts to pass through all of our hands during the lifetime. But this verse says to me, everything I am, forever, 
He's worthy. I said, well, years ago a young man saw this, this vision. He brought up in Ireland in a castle. Some people that passed the castle. They used to raise their noses in icy usher and say, it's so nice to know the garden. And John, uh, John Nelson Darby turned his back on wealth and fame and fortune to follow Jesus Christ. He traveled for 26 years in Europe without pa- unpacking his suitcase. He lived days at a time on acorns and milk. One day he sat in a cheap Italian boarding house and cupped his chin in his hands and sang, Jesus, I my prophet take him to all believe and follow thee. What would he say? He was saying, Worthy is a lamb that was slain to receive riches. He gave him all that he had. Lady Powers Court, another uh, fine Christian who lived at the same time, said it seems an insult to that love which gave all for us to say we love and yet stop to calculate about giving our all to him when our all is but two mites. Better not to love at all. Better to be cold and lukewarm, he said. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive my riches. I love to tell about um, C.T. Studd as a young man after he had been converted. He was born running. God set a fire in his soul and he, he inherited a fortune and he decided to put it all to work for Jesus. But he thought, well, he was marrying this young bride and uh the fairest thing to do would be at least to turn some of it over to her. His faith wouldn't do for her, so he gave away uh, his part of the fortune, but reserved some for her. Incidentally, his part of the fortune went to starting Moody Bible Institute. But he explained to her what he was doing, and she said to him, Charlie, what did Jesus tell the rich young man to do? And Charlie said, he told him to forsake all and follow him. And she said, Charlie, let's start our married life doing what the rich young man failed to do. She put it all to work. For him, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive riches. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive wisdom. Wisdom. Is wisdom personified, isn't he? Is there anything he doesn't know? Is there any wisdom he doesn't... I don't think that's what it means. Worthy is the lamb that the slain greasy eyes. The finest of my intellectual power. It makes me think of that verse in Luke chapter 10, verse 26, where the Savior says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength of all thy mind to thy neighbor to thyself. It seems to be the prevalent attitude today that anyone with unusual intellectual power should give them to the world. But Jesus is worthy of the second best of somebody else's children. But that isn't what this verse says. This verse is worthy of the land of the very best that I can bring to my mind. What a wonderful thing to see Christians, young Christians, keen young Christians coming and putting their mind on the altar for the Lord Jesus Christ to be used for him. Spurgeon said, I like this, he said, in that day when I surrendered myself to my Savior, I gave him my body, my soul, my spirit. I gave him all I had and all I shall have for time and eternity. I gave him all my talents, my powers, my faculties, my eyes, my ears, my conscience, my limbs, my emotions, my judgment, my whole manhood, and all that could come of it. Whatever fresh capacity or new capability I might be endowed with. And later on, S.B. Meyer said, Of all the minds God gave him, 
He made the most of it for Christ. And I think of that when we come to the Lord's table. And we bow before him. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive. Dear young believer here tonight, are you giving your mind to him? Or have you saved that for the unworthy world? And then it says, strength worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive strength. He doesn't need any strength, does he? Uh, he's worthy to receive my physical strength. Worthy to be to the very finest of my physical powers for him. My, the Olympic Games have just been going on. And I certainly wouldn't disparage them because I admire the discipline of young people today who will train and practice and exercise and go forth after the living. But I tell you, there's something better. There's something better than the living. Something better than the poor, withering wheat that they give in Montreal. That's the crown of glory that fadeth not away. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive strength. There's nothing more sensible, rational, reasonable than that I, for whom the Savior has died, to take the very finest of my strength and extend it to him. That's the vision we have tonight. We're saying that, in effect, when we come to worship him. I'll never forget when those five fellows died for Christ down in Alcaland, in Ecuador, and the word got to me that uh, Peter Fleming had a favorite hymn. It was in the InterVarsity hymn book, and I went to it and looked it up, and I never forget how loudly it spoke to me. It says this, and it's really saying in effect, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive strength, my strength. Lord, in the fullness of my might, I would for thee be strong. While runneth o'er each dear delight, to thee should rise my song. I would not give the world my heart, and then profess thy love. I would not feel my strength depart, and then thy service prove. I would not with swift-winged zeal on the world's errands go. Then labor up the heavenly hill with weary feet and slow. Oh, not for thee my deep desires, my poorer, baser heart. Oh, not for thee my fading fires, the ashes of my heart. Oh, choose me in my golden time. In my dear joys have part for thee the glory of my prime fullness of my heart. It's only reasonable, isn't it? Only reasonable that we should come to him with all our strength and Lord, I'll pray and extend and be sensible. And this is the chant that's going on in heaven right now. Ten thousand times, ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with one accord, worthy is the Lamb that looks like to reach from my strength. For Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor. My, what do we know really about praising the Lord? What do we know about hearts overflowing with love for Him and with a single pure desire to bring honor to His name? That's what it says, what it says to me. I think of dear John the Baptist, how he had that passion burning within him. I must decrease. He must increase. I think of men and women of God down through the century and their great desire was to keep honor and upon honor on the Lord Jesus Christ who is worthy of all. Crown him with many crowns the Lamb upon the throne worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor. We spent every moment of every day chanting and singing the praise of our Lord, it would be none too much. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive glory. Mostly in this world, he doesn't receive glory. 
In fact, the only, the only glory he receives is from redeemed blood, isn't it? And when you think of what little portion of the church's life is spent today in pure worship, it really is amazing. And yet he misses it. He misses it. I really believe with all my heart that the Lord Jesus has an appointment with me at the Lord's table every week. But I believe when I'm not there, he is. I come from California, and I'm sorry to say that uh, the attitude in many places in California is that no meeting uh, could be allowed to interfere with a trip to the high field. But when I think of that, I think of the, the day Jesus came to the house of Simon the Pharisee. You know what he said to him? He said, Simon, when I came to your house, you gave me no gift. You gave me no gift. What does it tell me? It tells me he missed me. If I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and I'm not there to remember him, he missed it. Infinitely worthy of it. And yet we forget. It's so easy for us to take the glory to ourselves. To take the glory to ourselves and to neglect careful not to touch the glory. And finally, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive blessing. What does this mean? It means, all my powers, all my powers of praise for him. You know, it's marvelous when you stop to think of it, how easy it is for us to work up enthusiasm over chasing a little white ball over 18 green. It's marvelous how we can get enthusiastic over baseball or talk with such proficiency about a new car. And yet when it comes to pouring blessings upon the worthy Lord Jesus, it comes tied. something the matter, isn't it? Young men, at old men as well, when we meet to worship the Lord, come with your basket full and don't be a dumb priest. I believe one of our regrets when we get to heaven is that we didn't worship and praise him more. Don't you think? Worthy is the land of the slave to receive authority, my subjection to his authority, and riches all that I possess is him, I'm just, is his, I'm just as And wisdom, the very finest of my intellectual power. And strength, the best of my physical powers for him. And honor, and glory, and blessing. One time ago I was in a home, somebody played a, a record. Paul Sandberg singing, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, and honor and glory and blessing. And you know, the Spirit of God is very present in that room. And when it when that record finished, one of the brothers wrote down easy. When he finally regained his composure, he said to another brother, that's what we're going to be singing throughout all eternity. So, dear friends, we don't have to wait. We can start right now. So as we need to remember the Lord, may our hearts be open to him, and whether audibly or silently, may the house tonight be filled with the odor of the ointment.